You can get mantra and meditation tracks at jasongalant.ca. If a spiritual teacher or guru, not all spiritual teachers are gurus, you know, not all spiritual teachers are realized, although uh, there must be some level of realization for them to be able to do the job properly. Otherwise, they're just giving you information, which you can get on the internet anyway, so <laughs> what's the point of working with them, right? You know, you're really working with these teachers or gurus to, for a transmission of consciousness, you know, for an actual experience, okay? But today what I'm speaking to you about is if a guru is really doing his or her job, okay, they are meeting just enough of your expectations so that one day they can not meet any of them. And what I mean by this is that your expectations are all aspects of your mind based on your fears and desires and basically the suffering, all the plans you came up with in order to get rid of or to avoid feeling things, to avoid uh, certain sufferings that are actually emerging from the way you think. But a guru's job will be to show you to let go of your opinions and to let go of all of your expectations of the guru and your life because the guru is there to actually mirror exactly what it is you feel about life. To mirror exactly what you think about life. So at first, a lot of gurus will have the nice bright shiny lights, the nice peaceful energy, the nice beautiful, blissful Shakti, you can call it. You'll be in their presence and you feel immersed in love. But when the real work begins, that's when it can get a little tricky. Okay? Because you can work with the same guru, the one that was so blissful, the one that was so loving, just a few days ago or a few moments ago, and then all of a sudden you'll have an experience emerge that may be not so pleasant. Perhaps it's your suffering or your judgments or your thoughts. And then you start looking at the guru, start measuring and saying, the guru should be this, they should do this, they should dance to my tune. They should dance to the tune of my suffering. Okay. Now, a lot of students get to this place and that's when they stop working with a guru. Because the guru is showing them the very patterns that need to become uprooted in order for the student to go further into the enlightenment process. Enlightenment is about not identifying with your judgment or your ideas or your perspectives on things anymore. So whatever you feel you're right or wrong about, if you are in suffering, you must be wrong about it. You must be wrong about these opinions of right and wrong, you see? So the Guru's energy, as you work intimately with the Guru, will bring your judgments up strongly. And it's your job as a student to let go of those judgments as they become obvious to you. Okay. If you are incapable of doing this, then you are not really doing work with a guru. You may be working with a healer, you may be exchanging information, but you're not ever letting go of the very barriers that will allow you to get to the next level of freedom. Unconditional love, unconditional happiness. You know, so many people speak about they want unconditional love, but they're not willing to let go of their conditions. <laughs> It's really absurd. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like, it's, you, that's why you pretty much break out in laughter when you realize this because <laughs> you'll approach somebody and say, I just want unconditional love. But you could see at some point how you are not willing to let go of any of your conditions on your own life, <laughs> about yourself, about the people around you, about things that should or shouldn't happen in order for happiness to exist, you know? So a guru's energy will work twofold, I guess you could say. Let's just oversimplify it, okay? At first, it will make your judgments and your feelings around those judgments more strong. It will like turbocharge them. So if you were an ass before, you become a super ass, okay? <laughs> That's the job. The guru is to throw that energy through there so the light, it's like they shine a flashlight in there so you can really see your stuff. And then when you are a true spiritual aspirant, at that point, you say, oh, I am not that stuff. I'll just let it go. 
Now, if you're a person that wants to hold on to the ego, what you will do then is attack the guru. You know, there are many great spiritual masters we've seen that have been attacked, you know, crucified, destroyed in many ways, okay? So we know that this is definitely an archetypal story, you know, that has happened in society. But this is really why. It's because people's energies, their feelings, their suffering comes up so strongly in the light of truth. So when the light of truth is shining on your suffering, that is when your acceptance and your humility is absolutely imperative for you to go further. If you cannot do that, and I'm saying you can fail a few times at it. I'm not saying it has to be immediate, you know, 100% perfection here. You don't have to be the perfect student. But if you're not eventually willing to let go of your perspective, then you're not really an enlightenment seeker. You are a desire seeker or a suffering compensation seeker. You're seeking to get rid of feelings. You're seeking to numb yourself. And at that point, medication will do a better job than the guru will. <laughs> Okay. Spirituality is about your own expansion and about accepting what you are expanding into. It's like moving into a new territory. You won't move there if you don't want to move there, if you hate it, you know. But if you accept it, then you will expand into that territory. Hmm. Now, a few of you that are watching this video right now, you may think this video is about you. And I'm going to say it is about many of you. It's not just about one of you, okay? There are quite a few people that are going through this right now. And I've had uh, some people make some beautiful comments down below the videos where they're having these experiences emerge where they've let go of their attachments to life being a certain way. They've been through some tragic events, break up with family and friends and life and jobs and all this sort of thing. And then they're saying, Jason, what's happening? This beautiful experience emerged. I felt like I was loved today. I was having this beautiful experience of love even though no one was around me. I had this unbelievable divine experience. What is that? And I would say now the videos for this person have become not theory anymore. Now they've become reality. You see, breaking your attachments to all of these conditions, what it does, it helps you drop out of the mind and into the heart. And when the heart is active, that's when divinity, your own divinity becomes realized and there are some beautiful experiences there. Some amazingly beautiful experiences that are unconditional. You take them with you everywhere you go. You take them with you into tragedy. You take them with you into happy times. You take them with you everywhere. They do not leave you. The divine never leaves you because it is in you, it is with you. So that's why a guru is not so fixated on giving a crap about what your mind thinks. Because your mind is what is perpetuating your suffering and the suffering of everyone around you. Because trust me, you are also adding to that. You know, don't think that your idealisms that you're holding on to aren't torturing the souls around you. I think the world should be this way. You, you, you do thing, you do this, you do what I tell you, right? You know, this is how the Hitlers emerge. The difference between, <laughs> like Hitler would not have been a good spiritual student. I know he was into the occult, okay? He was a person that was fascinated with mysticism, but he totally misunderstood it. <laughs> he was looking for power of the ego. He was looking for avoiding his own suffering. He would have been a horrible student because the minute you would have said, hey, uh, you got some anger and oh, is your anger getting stronger? Oh, there it is. Then he would have killed you. <laughs> so this is the thing. If you're a spiritual aspirant, it has everything to do with you accepting what is being shown to you. And a guru only turbocharges this process. They don't just take it away. I mean, they turbocharge it, make it obvious. And yes, there is sometimes guru transmission where there is grace that moves through the guru and there is uh, some experiences that help alleviate some of the karma of the student. But this will only happen when the student is open to this. It doesn't happen when they're heavily in the mind and they've shut their heart down. Because the heart is the USB port to the guru, you see? When your heart is open, that's how you connect to things and that's how downloads or transmissions are, are uh, able to happen. When the heart is open, that's when you can download the Enlightenment app from the Guru. Okay, so anything that is trapping you in the mind must be let go of and then the side effect is the heart opens and then beautiful gifts come to you.
So I hope this helps. Take care for now. Thanks for supporting my work. And I also want to let you know, I also have another YouTube channel called Jason Gallant Music. And there I will be uploading meditation and music tracks. And feel free to listen in. And you can also access those tracks on my website at jasongallant.ca in case you, know, you want to download them for your iPhone or iPod or something like that. Okay? So thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.